OK, so it, it falls to me now to to uh, to cover um, an introduction um, from a from a higher level point of view of the STM32 U5 family um, and some of the benefits and new features that you will find within the STM32 U5. The STM32 has been around for um, since around 2007-2008, so, so quite a few years now. It's been a very successful family for ST um, and for our customers. Um, we now have around 60,000 customers worldwide for the STM32 and we've shipped around 6 billion of them since its launch. So very popular family, uh, very well received by the market. The STM32 U5 uh, series um, follows on in a long line of ultra low power microcontrollers um, and is, is the latest generation. It's on uh, 40 nanometer technology, which is the second product we've launched uh, in 40 nanometer. And it moves on with the ultra low power in terms of improving ultra low power performance whilst also increasing um, runtime performance. So actual DMIPS available to you. OK, so it continues with the theme, as I say, of um, our strength with ultra low power with micro general purpose microcontrollers. Um, we're launching it now. Um, to you all uh, to play with today. Um, it will go to mass market at the start of, of next year, uh, around January time. Um, it is it is in production. We are, we are currently ramping production, so it's it's it will be available to, to the mass market uh, in January. Um, it continues, as I say, the ultra low power um, theme. So we started with the STM32 L1, which was the first um, ultra low power Cortex M on the market, and then we we moved forward throughout the families. With 2014, we launched the L0, which was um, an entry level, uh, low cost, uh, ultra low power device, and then we started looking at improving performance, um, both both in terms of power consumption, and also actually in, in raw performance of the of the micro itself. So with the L4, we, we introduced a, a Cortex M4, um, which achieved number one uh, status in the ULP bench, uh, benchmarking uh, for ultra low power micros. And we continued that with the L4 Plus, improving performance. And with the L5, we introduced um, an M33 a trust zone enabled uh, ultra low power product. And the U5 follows on from that. Again, it's uh, an M33. Uh, product. All STM32s are covered by um, our 10 year longevity commitment, um, as shown on the slide here. Uh, this means that we every January we refresh the commitment. Um, it is a rolling commitment. It's not from the date of launch. It is a rolling commitment. Every year we, we refresh and continue to, to offer to support the product for at least 10 years. So it is at least 10 years. And if I take an example from the non ultra low power um, range, which is the uh, STM32 F1 family, which we launched in 2007, um, we still offer 10 year longevity on that. So, you know, a significant uh, life cycle uh, for the STM32s. As I say, the STM32 U5 is the new flagship for STM32 ultra low power microcontrollers. Um, it takes a huge step forward in terms of performance and um, builds on the ultra low power capabilities as well. So again, as you can see on the slide, we we ha ha now have um, a ULP mark of 535, which is a large step from the previous 370 of, of the L5. So a big step forward in terms of uh, power performance and also a step forward in, in DMIPS in terms of uh, raw power of the, of the core. So um, two great benefits there, both low power and, and uh, performance. Um, it is going to be a wide ranging family. You know, with many STM32s, we have each of the series has, is quite a large family in its own right. The STM32 U5 will be no different. 
So it will be a uh, So we will, uh, once the full family is launched, we will have anything from 128k flash all the way through to four megs of flash and multiple packages as always, as we'll see in a few slides time. Um, right now we're launching the one meg and two meg flash variants. So that's what you, you're using today. Um, but we will be expanding the family to cover this full range of uh, flash options so that you can find a, a product that will suit your needs um, in terms of memory capacity. The STM32U5 is suitable for many, many applications, as with all ultra low power uh, micros that we do. Um, particularly, we're targeting it at uh, wellness or fitness or lifestyle type things, you know, activity trackers, GPS products, that kind of thing. But also, you can find uses for it within within metering, whether that's gas, water, or electricity meters. Um, you should be able to find a use there. The, you know, the added security and the ultra low power features um, are of great benefit to in the metering uh, area. It's also suitable for for sensors, industrial sensors. Uh, you know, maybe where where you have a, a, a limit on the on the power. The ex, you know the example picture there. Um, being a, a smoke sensor where often they are powered by a loop and there is a very strict limit on the amount of power that the devices can take. Uh, there, you know, the ultra low power products that we have, including the STM32U5, can help greatly there. Things like med medical devices where you have handheld devices which are battery powered um, and you the user to get maximum usage out of that battery and not be changing the battery on a regular basis, especially where it's a, an important device like an insulin pump or a glucose meter. You know, you need longevity of battery. Um, so the STM32U5 can, can really help there. And finally, with the added security and ultra low power, um, we can target things like um, mobile payment devices. So, so mobile POS terminals, for example. In terms of the features available, like any other STM32, um, it is very fully featured. There are a lot of integrated peripherals um, associated with the STM32U5. Here more than ever, we've, we've, we've packed in a lot of features. You know, the, the typical feature features that you would expect to find within the STM32, such as um, the two mega samples ADC, you know, 12 and 14 bit ADCs, DAX, comparators, op amps. Those are the things you, you would expect to find. Um, then more enhanced connectivity with things like USB on the go, um, SD, SDIO and MMC for external memories, OctoSpy again for, for external memories, and here we have two OctoSpires available. Lots of um, CAN, uh, I2C's, SPI's, etc. cetera. So again, uh, exactly as you would expect on an STM32. Moving over, it's continuing the theme on, on external connectivity. We have the SF, FSMC interface, allowing you to connect displays and memories to it. There are plenty of timers in there, like any other STM32. We have the camera interface, uh, the touch sensing controller. And then if we look on the, um, the digital side and on the enhanced security side, where we've, we've been improving security on the, the devices, we have 256-bit AES. We have SHA-1, SHA-256, true random number generation generator, um, public key authentication, um available then we have serial or audio interfaces we have uh, mdf and adf which are dedicated peripherals uh, hardware peripherals um, to accelerate mathematical and trigonometric functionalities and also audio uh, coding and, and that kind of thing so previously, the MDF was, was you might have seen on other families it called uh, Cordic. Um, this is a, a, an enhancement from that, uh, the next generation, the MDF. Down the central spine of the of the uh, chart here, um, you have the the core core features. Um, so 
we have the Cortex M33 core running at 160 megahertz, which gives us a step up from the previous uh, M33 ultra low power products that we have. Um, we have the floating point unit, we have the memory protection unit. Um, we do have trust zone available as well within the device, um, so you can enhance your security that way and in the embedded trace module. Then at looking at some of the high performing features. We have the LPDMA, we have the FMAC and Cordic, and we have the ART Accelerator, with ART Accelerator being effectively a cache uh, for accelerating code. And for graphics, we have the Chrome ART. And as I say, on the first products, up to two megs of flash. It is dual bank flash, so you can do read while write, um, and up to 786k of SRAM. In terms of the new features, um, and, and specifically new features that we, we're going to talk about today, um, the STM32U5 has a, a, a new um, device called LPBAM, so Low Power Background Autonomous Mode, which allows the peripherals or allows the STM32U5 to buffer data from peripherals um, whilst the core is asleep and only wake the core up. Um, when necessary or on, on, on certain triggers um, that you can predefine. So if peripherals like uh, you know, I squared C or the SPI interfaces or the, the ADCs um, can be gathering data in low power modes and um, get, buffering it up into the SRAM and only wake up the core when the action is complete. And these can be chained as well. So you can have a chain of events um, required to happen before um, the core is woken up. In terms of the low power modes, we've introduced a new stop three mode. Previously we had stop one, stop two. Uh, we've introduced stop three mode, um, which allows you to configure the amount of SRAM that you want to retain in that stop mode. Uh, we still have traditional stop two mode, which gives full retention of the of all of the RAM, that obviously takes uh, a certain amount of power to configure, uh, to, to um, retain the memory, and you may not want to retain all memory while your device is in stop mode. So we've introduced a new uh, stop level, which allows you to tailor um, the amount of SRAM that you want to retain um, to your particular application. In terms of security, um, we've been enhancing uh, microcontroller security throughout as, as we launch more and more products. STM32U5 is no different. Um, we will re reach PSA uh, level three and CSIP level three for this device. So these are independently verified um, attack tested, you know, assurances um, which allow you to so you're you you can be confident in in the security at the end of the day it is still a general purpose microcontroller but they are becoming more and more resilient to things like side channel attacks and, and that kind of thing so we, we're improving the cryptography to um, support as i say that said there um, side channel uh, aes so dedicated uh, aes designed to protect against side channel attacks. Public key authentication, um, traditional AES as well. Um, so side ch just for so you're aware, side in protecting um, against side channel attacks with AES, there is more work involved. There is more actions involved on the micro side. So doing things like encryption or decryption uh, with that cell take longer than traditional uh, AES. So we provide both so that you can, um, if you need need performance, you can utilize the, the standard AES. Um, but if you need uh, specific security, a higher level of security, you can use the side channel uh, resilient uh, AES. Uh, we do have the true random number generator in there as we, ha we have for, for many. We have um, Shar in there as well. And the, the CryptoLib 
that we have available. So that so the software library that um, drives uh, all the, the crypto features has been CAVP uh, certified. So I know that's important for, for certain applications. In terms of um, wanting to isolate your code, um, you can do that. We have secure peripherals, we have secure DMA, and we also have uh, obviously trust zone as well, which again allows you to, to separate uh, your secure and non-secure environments. We've introduced a new level of, of protection against the on the, the JTAG or serial wide debug interface, uh, the RDP, the so-called um, read protect. Um, we now have um, a, an increased level of protection and it is now password protected um, in addition to being um, OTP protected as well. So there, there are a number of levels you can you can set it to. On the memory protection side, we have OTP, we have hide protect uh, feature, which allows code to only be visible at certain times. In particular, things like um, your boot ROM, um, that can be visible and readable um, whilst it is booting. Obviously, it needs to be readable to be executed. Um, but once the main application is loaded, it then becomes invisible. So it cannot be read, it can't can't be accessed at all. So there's there's no chance of um, accessing that code at a later date. Uh, then we have um, write protect, read uh, and read protect on the flash available. I've already covered read protect. We have the traditional memory protection unit allowing you to segment uh, the memories um, and protect different accesses um, depending on memory regions that can be all configured and in terms of the external flash if if you're connected to the external flash to the uh, octo spy interface that can be in, on the fly decrypted so you can you can have your uh, if you have external code or external assets in external flash they can be encrypted and only decrypted within the micro We've improved tampering to include active tamper um, and also added uh, voltage and temperature monitoring tamper within the device. Um, so here we're protecting against you know, intrusion by affecting the, the runtime environment or environmental um, areas so, so we can monitor for that as well. And then as part of the ecosystem, we have trust, trusted firmware for Cortex-M available. We have secure boot. We can do secure firmware install and the device has hardware unique keys as well. So a quick summary on the unique features um, or the new features um, for the STM32U5. Uh, improving uh, power, low power consumption with features like LPDMA. A program a being able to program the amount of RAM to be retained. Um, improved STMPS functionality. We didn't cover that in a slide specifically, but there are part numbers with and without external S SMPS um, power support um, to improve uh, overall power consumption if required. Improved and higher security um, with things like hardware unique keys, um, improving read protection uh, with improved regression with password features. Improving safety with ECC available on the flash and SRAM. Um, improving the data storage. So we have 100K cycles for um, 512K bytes of the flash. So if you need to do um, EEPROM emulation type activities, um, th that helps. Uh, greatly and an improved ADC so uh, the addition of a 14-bit ADC so in terms of the overall offer what we have to offer you in terms of part numbers etc as I say today we are launching with two different memory configurations so one megabyte of flash or two megabytes of flash both with 786k of SRAM 
that portfolio will be expanded both upwards towards four megs of flash and downwards towards um, 128k of flash. Um, that will come in, in, in the coming months and, and, and year. Um, but for now, we're launching with, with these two memory sizes. It's available in multiple packages, so eight packages, as it says there, QFNs, QFPs uh, and BGAs. So anything from uh, 48 pins all the way through to 169 pin. So, so you have good choices for your, um, depending on the IO, the amount of IO you need. And like with many uh, STM32s, we offer it with, with and without hardware crypto. So that the hardware crypto features I've talked about in the previous slides, they are optional. So if you don't need security, you don't have to have them. And uh, the, the, we have part numbers with and without uh, those features. So that ends up giving you, you know, quite a full uh, roadmap, quite a lot of uh, part numbers to, to choose from for your uh, particular application. So there should be something in there to fit your application, whether that's with with or without uh, encryption, um, and with or without um, the external um, or internal SMPS support. Um, there are many options available to you. When it comes to the ecosystem for development and uh, prototyping, etc., like with uh, all STM32s, we have a range of boards available. Um, starting on the left-hand side, we have the evaluation board. This is a big board, fully featured, lots of uh, physical connectors for um, testing uh, many of the peripherals available to you um, to make it s slightly easier to, to connect. Um, as we move to the, to the center, we have the traditional discovery kit. So here, tar targeting, um, usually the discovery kits target a, 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 an example application. And here we're, we're targeting example cloud connectivity. So we have things like, as well as the SM32U5 and connectors for things like USB, um, et cetera. We also have external connectivity. So, so Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, et cetera, you know, to allow, allow external connectivity to the board. And finally, the, 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 the simplest and easiest uh, potentially to prototype with is the nuclear board. That's the board you are playing with today. Um, so a board with the, the 144 pin part on there, um, allowing you to connect to all of the GPIOs. Um, to your, to, so you can wire out to any of your GPIOs and connect for prototyping. All of the boards whichever it, it is you choose, all of the boards have the integrated ST link. So you don't need any external debugger to program or debug them. Um, all you need is a USB cable and you can get started straight away. And in terms of getting started, uh, software that's available, the development environment that's available is all free of charge, all downloadable. Uh, from our website, as you will have found already, because you've had to install a large amount of it already for this workshop. Um, but we, it is um, it is freely available, free to use. The drivers are, are uh, free to use, as are many of the the um, ecosystem components associated with SCM32s. So things like the, not only things like the software um, you can use free of charge, uh, but things like taking the schematics and the Gerbers, et cetera, um, you can utilize those on a royalty free basis. So if you want to copy our schematic um, for a particular or, or a particular comp a part of the, the schematic or the layout or anything like that, it's all free to use. It makes it much simpler for you to get your design up and running. Um, so with the ecosystem, you may, you've downloaded part of it. You have the IDE, you have the, the drivers available uh, for the U5. What you may not have noticed or be aware of is everything else associated with it. So you have our Cube IDE. Um, as part of Cube IDE, integrated into it is CubeMX, but CubeMX, if, if for your um, development environments, when you're back in the office, you use a different IDE, um, we do have CubeMX as a standalone product, which allows you to do all the configuration um, 
and generate startup code and projects for a number of third party um, IDEs and tools. Uh, so if you don't use CubeID, if you use uh, another, you, you can probably generate the project from CubeMX uh, for your environment. When it comes to programming, um, we have a standalone programmer, stm 32 Cube programmer. So that allows you to program your own boards um, in a standalone fashion. So you may have a, a need to just for someone just to program boards, uh, but doesn't need all the, the overhead of the, the Cube IDE, et cetera, installing. So there you can use Cube Promo. On a runtime, um, from a runtime point of view, uh, we have STM32 Cube Monitor, enabling you to create a monitoring environment um, specific to your application to, to understand how it is behaving at runtime, um, monitor registers, memory, uh, et, et cetera, and, and have chains of, of, of uh, monitoring set up so you can you can look for sp specific uh, things if you need to. If you haven't already looked um, within the STM32U5 cube package that's in, that you've installed, um, there is quite a lot in there. There is the drivers, so you have the, the HAL drivers in there, um, obviously, for the, for the STM32U5, but you also have middlewares and you have example user applications um, and example code, uh, all, with it, all within that package uh, available to you. So if you're struggling to work out how to drive a particular peripheral, there will be an example within that package of how to do it, um, so you can you can go and get that example and look at it. But you will have installed it by downloading from the website or from within uh, Cube IDE itself, um, or it, it came to you as part of the, the package uh, for the workshop. Um, but just for it, so you're aware, um, the Cube packages are all supported within GitHub as well. So we, they are available on GitHub. And so there you will find um, the latest uh, fixes, etc. We're we're maintaining it through GitHub to provide early um, visibility to fixes that which which uh, maybe would take some time to come out when we're waiting for formal releases in in the traditional package model. So you can you'll find potentially uh, more recent fixes within GitHub if you have a particular problem. You can also feedback changes if you find an issue. Um, you can also do a, a pull request and, um, and uh, we will analyze the, the, uh, those pull requests and decide whether, whether they need to be incorporated into a, a full release. At the top here, um, we talk about cube MCU packages. The, that, that's the, so that's the package you've installed for the specific MCU, but at the bottom we have expansion packages and these can either be from ST um, or third parties. Um, mostly from ST, so we can have expansion packages which add to the functionality of STM32 Cube environment. So, for example, um, if you're within your design, you're going to use an ST MEMS device. Um, you can get an expansion package for that MEMS device, integrate it into um, STM32 Cube, and then all you, you have all the drivers, all the example code for driving that device using the STM32. So when it comes to adding in uh, other non-micro ST components within to the uh, environment, you, you can it all becomes integrated and you can debug those devices as well. Now, finally, the big section on the right hand side. Um, this is the um, the middleware section of the package you, you've downloaded. So here, um, the middleware we provide when we talk when from an ST point of view, when we talk about middleware, it's the it's the functionality that sits directly above the, the drivers. Um, so here we ship for the STM32U5, we deliver Microsoft's Azure Artos package. Um, well, it's four separate packages, in fact. So ThreadX for the operating system, 
Filex for, for the file system, NetX for networking support, and USBX for the uh, USB support. Um, this is a fully featured package. Um, everything is integrated and designed to work together in a consistent way um, with examples, uh, easy to follow, um, easy to set up. Um, it is free of charge um, to utilize, like anything we package for the STM32. Um, so you're, you're free to, to go ahead and use it um, within your own applications.